my Patreon viewers, Carl, has asked me to talk about Metasploit, which is a topic I am not that familiar with. I have played around with a little bit, but I figured I'd give my insights and what I thought of it and um, things I like about it and things I don't like about it. Metasploit is a, a program that basically has um, a large database of uh, vulnerability attacks, uh, so you can use it very easily to test systems uh, that you may have. Now, uh, commonly it's already pre-installed on what's called Kali Linux, previously known as Backtrack. It's a cool distribution of Linux. has a cool looking logo with a dragon. Um, and is currently, since they switched to Kali, Debian based, which uh, is a good thing because now I guess they're going to start trying to move things upstream into the Debian uh, repositories, um, from my understanding. Um, let me talk a little bit about uh, what it does. Basically, you can go into it and you can say, okay, I, I have a machine that's a Windows XP service pack to running these services and it can give you basically some exploits, things, programs you can send to people uh, that would open up a, a vulnerability on their system. Sometimes it can just attack that machine and look for vulnerabilities. And then other times you can, uh, there's some, uh, it can set up servers that you send someone a link to a website and it tries to use an exploit on their web browser and stuff like that. So it's very, it just basically, once a vulnerability is found for all operating systems, it's not just to attack Windows machines, uh, it's, it's, it's most cases it's added to this database and then you can use that database with Metasploit to attack these, these uh, services. And it's great to have all that in one place for testing uses. So like if I want to attack a machine, you can actually do an attack to try everything against a machine. Um, and there's actually a GUI interface for Metasploit called Armitage, which I have also played around with some. And I have taken some test boxes running uh, Windows, it was a while ago, it was probably about two years ago, no, probably more than that, uh, that I tried this, but I had a Windows machine, I want to say Windows XP, it may have been Windows NT. Um, but anyway, I did what was called a Hail Mary attack on this test machine. Um, that uh, was just running basic services. And what the Hail Mary does, and it's an option inside uh, Armitage, it uses the Metasploit and just does attacks with every possible vulnerability and tries to, to break into this machine. And I have had some success with it. And then I've had success once you get into that machine that uh, you can actually use it, other vulnerabilities to pull down other people's credentials and then pivot into other systems on the network. Um, so it works. Lots of people like it, and it is has lots of things all ready to go for you once you learn how to work it. Uh, again, I've done a little bit with the Metasploit uh, shell, but mostly I've done stuff through Armitage, and I've barely done anything in either. What do I not like about all three of these things, uh, Kali Linux, Metasploit, and Armitage? Armitage, again, is just a front end for Metasploit, and it does a fairly good job. It's written in Java, uh, and uh, I think it's kind of a, it's kind of slow, and um, but it works. Uh, doing something at like the Hail Mary Pass again, I think all three of these, you know, getting Kali Linux and using Armitage and or Metasploit to um, to test a system. You want to see is my system secure and just do a Hail Mary Pass or try these things. That's great for that, and that's mainly its its main use for it. But things I don't like about all three is they're, they're bulky, especially, you know, let's start just looking at Kali Linux. Kali Linux comes with a full GNOME desktop, which is way overkill. If you're just going to go in there to test, if you if you're really know what you're doing, you don't need GNOME to do these things, or Genome, or GNOME, or however you say it. Uh, you shouldn't even really need a GUI interface at all, and if so, something like, like something very light like um, uh, Ice Window Manager or Fluxbox would be more than enough. But the fact that it even goes straight to a GUI interface, the people who are using this should be system admins who are trying to test systems. And if you're, you're trying to do something like this and you need a GUI interface and you're a sysadmin, time to find a new job or actually start learning how to do yours, just to be flat out honest with you. I can't remember how big Kali Linux is off the top of my head, but I want to say that it's like four gigs. Four gigs! That's huge. Now, I understand that it has a lot of exploits built in. But really, when you're going to run this, you're going to update that database right away. So I don't even, it, it just seems so bloated. It's like a full desktop environment with 
office and stuff like that. Like Ubuntu is only, I think, like a gig and a half this time, which I still think is ridiculously large for a base operating system. Um, but the fact that this is just to do exploits, you're not supposed to be using Kali Linux as your main primary desktop. It's supposed to be used off a live CD or a USB drive. Or if you're going to install it, you're going to install it on a machine you're going to use to test systems. Um, it just seems like there's a lot of stuff on there that is not needed. Um, and I think that the size could be shrunk down on that. Now, when it comes to Metasploit and its database, I don't know how big the database is, and I probably should have looked at how many exploits are in there, but still, each exploit at most should be a megabyte. I mean, even that's really big for a program that's going to test an exploit. It really should be you know, in the kilobyte range when you're looking at size. So the fact that uh, I don't know how big Metasploit is by itself, but I can tell you with Kali Linux, it's, Kali Linux is just huge, and I don't know if it's just Kali Linux has a lot of stuff on there that is unneeded, or if just the Metasploit, Metasploit dead, and again, Kali Linux has stuff other than just Metasploit on there, but most people use it for the Metasploit. Um, so yeah, just the bulkiness and the slowness of it, um, these are supposed to be hacker tools to, to test the system or to break into a system, and it just, those type of tools should be very, very lightweight. And it's like, a majority of the time when I've seen tutorials or people talking about Metasploit, it's to make yourself an entry point. Lots of times people are making binaries that you can send to somebody on their system run and it gives you access into their system, maybe with some system uh, privileges escalations. And really, if I wanted to get into a Windows machine, I'd write myself a simple script or a program, compile it as an ex uh, exe file, uh, and it would literally be, I mean, teeny tiny. It, I think I would probably put an icon to make it look like a program, and the icon probably would take up more space than the actual program, because it doesn't need to be that big. Uh, and also, it just, it just seems bulky for a tool for what it's supposed to be. I'm not criticizing how it works. Uh, I'm just saying that it, I, I feel that, and again, this is with little knowledge on the project itself, it could be trimmed down quite a bit. Um, so those are my views. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying that as an admin tool and a hacker tool, if you're an admin or hacker, you should, everything should be streamlined. And the fact that it is so large and bulky and the fact that it, that Kali Linux comes with this big GUI interface, again, you shouldn't even really need a GUI interface for the most part. And if so, it should be a minimal one. And, um, Again, with, uh, I started to say earlier, with Metasploit, if you're going to run attacks in these systems, you want the most updated database, so you're going to update that database altogether. So <laughs> I understand there's a convenience of having it on the CD, but it would be nice if they had two versions of Kali Linux, the full version, and then the lightweight one that's, you know, maybe 200, 300 megabytes, that, and, and that's good kind of wide, as a compressed image on an ISO, um, that when you run it, once you get a network connection, you type one command and it up pulls the database down from the internet. And then in the full database, maybe they can make it, and I don't know if there is something like this, it's like, okay, I want to attack a Linux machine running the kernel 2.4 whatever and running an old version of SSH. You know, you put that information in and maybe it goes and it pulls down the database that meets those specs so you don't need the full database, but it just pulls down the little bit of what you need. Um, and stores on your system for those attacks instead of giving you everything. But I understand a lot of people use Kali Linux because it has that full database in there. But again, you're going to want to update it anyway. It's kind of going back and forth. Um, so it would be nice if there were two versions. There was the lightweight version that's the minimal that will pull down what you need when you need it and maybe a full version so that if you're someplace and you don't have that internet connection or you're on a network that you don't want to be pulling down all that stuff, maybe you have the full version with everything packaged in. So those are my views on, on not just Metasploit, but Armitage and Kali Linux. I suggest checking them out. I do not suggest, and I've talked to people who use Kali Linux as like their main OS, and I just think that's kind of silly. Uh, I think even if you ask the developers, it says it's not meant to be installed to your system. Um, it's meant for testing. So, I mean, again, if you have a separate like laptop or something that you bring with you that all you do with it is, is check, you know, for network attacks, sure, go ahead and install it on that, but to be using it for your everyday web browsing just seems a little weird to me. Um, so what are your experiences? Comment below, let me know. Again, I'm, I'm not, 
I'm giving constructive criticism. I'm not uh, dissing the project at all, any of the projects, because I think it's great that there's stuff like that and a place where you can go and get the database of all those uh, vulnerabilities and attacks. Um, I just think that packaging and pounding it all into an ISO that's, again, I'm pretty sure it's like four gigs. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, again, I haven't looked at the project in probably at least two years. Um, but I was asked to talk about it, so I thought I'd do this quick little talk about it. And uh, it, it does work. It does, I mean, again, uh, I've had success doing a Hail Mary Pass. But again, a Hail Mary Pass, again, is doing all the attacks on one machine. That's great. If you're testing your machine, also be uh, uh, realize that if you're doing attacks on a machine, you can also mess up that machine that you're attacking. So you wouldn't necessarily want to use it on a main machine that's that you need right then and there. You want to do it on a test machine. Uh, that's another thing, and that's that's great. If you're if you just want to test all your systems and do hail mary passes on all of them, I think it's great. If you are actually an attacker, shame on you. <laughs> depending on what you're what you're doing your attacks for, um, but you're not gonna you're not gonna want something that big and bulky and that noisy. You're not gonna want to do a hail mary attack because it's gonna set off bells and whistles. If the system administrator for that system it has any clue what they're going to do, they're gonna notice that all these attacks are coming in and they're going to be notified, hopefully. So, so definitely, again, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but if you want to test your systems, which is what it's primarily for, it's great. Uh, if you're an actual attacker, probably not the best tool for you. Um, anyway, again, comment below, let me know what you think. I'm sure I'm probably going to get a lot of criticism back on what I said, because people love these projects and I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just trying to give ideas again to streamline it a little bit and i hope that you have a great day again thank you my page to my patreon viewer my patreon all my patreon supporters but definitely thank you carl for asking me to talk on this topic that i know very little about and i want to make that clear as i have a few times earlier in this talk so thank you for watching and i hope that you have a great day